Okay, so the first problem on the concept review says that a garden hose emits nine quarts of water in six seconds. At this rate, how long will it take for the hose to admit, uh, emit 12 quarts? So this is one of those times where the proportional method would be really handy. That if we have nine, nine quarts in six seconds, how long for 12 quarts? Okay, so how are you going to solve that? Anybody got an idea? Oh, we cross multiply. Six times 12 gets us 72. Yeah. So we get 72 and nine times X gets us nine X. When we have this set up, the simplest way is just knowing I cross multiply whatever two numbers exist and then I divide it by whatever number isn't being multiplied by something else. So if I divide 72 by nine, how many seconds is that? It's gonna be eight, yes. So eight seconds is how long it would take for 12 quarts. All right, so how much water does the hose emit in 10 seconds? Similarly, we set up the nine over six now being 10. Nine times 10 is 90, and then we divide it by the six to find out what X equals. So how many quarts? Fifteen. Yep, it's going to be fifteen quarts. Excellent. Yeah, fifteen quarts. Um, so question number two is saying a pound of ground beef costs five dollars. At this rate, what would the cost of three pounds be? I want to figure out how much three pounds is going to cost us. You multiply it, you bet. The cost per pound times how many pounds you're getting is five times three for 15. Then if we just needed to buy half of a pound, what's that gonna cost us? Two and a half, one and a half, um, or yeah, one half uh, divided by the five or times the five, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's going to be two and a half. How much is it going to cost us for a quarter of a pound? Okay. So basically I'm saying if I have the cost of five, because five is the whole amount, I only need one quarter of that amount. So it's going to be a dollar twenty-five. Yep, because that is five fourths, which is 1.25. So it's going to be a buck 25. How much for three quarters of a pound? 3.75. You bet. You could be probably the easiest thing to do is just be multiplying your whole number by the percentage value or the decimal value of the fraction. Three quarters is 0.75. Five times 0.75 is going to be 3.75. And how much for three and three quarter pounds? So 
So we just wrote oops. Yeah, forgot a one on there. Eighteen seventy-five. One of the things was we figured out it's fifteen bucks for three pounds, and it's three seventy-five for three quarters of a pound. Fifteen plus three seventy-five is eighteen seventy-five. Or you can multiply five by 3.75 and also get that value. Okay. Ooh, comparison shopping, very important. There are some prices for cans of juice that are the same brand and same size at different store. Which store offered the best deal? Store X offers four cans for $2.48. Store Y offers five cans for $3, and Store Z offers 59 cents per can. So you needed to decide is A, B, or C the best deal and how you know that for sure. Yes, option C is the best, Store Z, because Store X, if you have spend uh, $2.48 on four cans. When you divide that, that turns out to 62 cents a can. Store Y's rate is 60 cents a can. And then as it was given us in store Z, it is 59 cents per can. So not a big savings, but still, it's, it's still the cheapest. All right. Um, I, if you happen to look at the test or the test review answers, I have removed question number 24 because it did not seem like it was worth the effort. So uh, it jumps straight to a the number five. Number five is gonna take us some figuring out. Um, and it said a certain species of bird migrates 14,000 miles in 90 days. It rests eight hours each day and flies the rest. A person race walking can walk 20 kilometers in a hundred minutes which, and one mile is 1.6 kilometers, okay? So who moves the fastest, the bird or the person and being able to kind of justify our reasoning. So I want you to play around with some stuff. I wanna give you a little bit of time to explore it and then we'll see what we got for, for answers. All right, so this problem is a little confusing because it gives us different time amounts and different units of measurement. So that can be a little hard to break it down. So what we really want to do is we're, we're trying to find basically a unit rate on time. Um, so it's saying that a bird is able to travel 14,000 miles in 90 days. So we want to figure out, for starters, how many miles that bird is traveling every day. It has a daily rate of 155.55 and so on and so forth miles. This, the five goes on indefinitely. Great. So this is how much it travels in a day. We then need to figure out, well, how much is it traveling then per hour? It says the bird rests for eight hours, but is flying the rest. So if we have 24 hours in a day, we take eight out. It means it travels this far in 16 hours. Okay, so now we need to figure out, well, if it goes that far in this many hours, how much is it traveling per hour? So when I take my 155.55555 and divide it by 16, I get about 9.72 miles per hour. Okay, so that lets me know the bird's approximate speed. The next thing is we now need to look at how fast the humans can race walk. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but it's those legs just wobble super fast. It's crazy to watch. Okay, we know that it goes 20 kilometers in 100 minutes. Well, we don't know necessarily what that is. We're working with miles up here, but kilometers down here. We cannot compare them when they're in different units. So we need to convert it to the same. I'm more comfortable in dealing with the miles version because I've already done miles and it's a base value that I'm familiar with. So I need to figure out, well, if I go 20 kilometers, how many miles is that? It gave us the baseline of every mile I go, it's 1.6 kilometers. So how many 1.6s can I take out of this 20 to be able to find out how many miles that is? When I divide 20 by 1.6, I get 12 and a half miles. 
So 12 and a half miles is being traveled in 100 minutes. Okay. Well, again, this up here is in hours. So we have 12 and a half miles in 100 minutes, but I need a miles per hour. So how many hours is 100 minutes? So if we divide, it's going to be 1.6666666 indefinitely, okay? So basically in one and two thirds hours, so 1.6666 indefinitely, um, in a little less than two hours, we traveled this far. So again, we need to break this down to a unit rate of how far am I traveling per mile? What am I going to do with these two numbers? I'm going to divide them. So if I travel this many miles in this much time, how many miles is that in one hour? So I take 12 and a half and I divide it by 1.666666. And from that, we get about 7.48 miles per hour. So who's faster? The bird is by, by over two miles an hour. Yep, yep. So you are not gonna have to do something quite this complicated on the test, but a skill that you do have to understand is you cannot be working with two different units of, of time or two different values um, and be able to equally compare them. You have to convert one to the other. I can't say, oh, I spent um, 45 minutes on something or I spent um, you know, three quarters of an hour. Well, what does that mean? I, I don't know, or I spent 0.4 hours on it. Well, what does that mean? I, you can't work with, again, minutes to hours. It has to be minutes to minutes or hours to hours. So it's just about understanding, you gotta convert to be able to compare. That don't worry if this makes you just want to like grab your table and flip it. It's it was overwhelming. It took me a while. Um, so the fact you only had four minutes to try uh, is probably a little unfair. But again, the bigger lesson, even if you didn't know how to get to this, just understanding eh, I can't work with miles to hours and kilometers to minutes. Got to convert from one to the other. Doesn't matter which one you choose. It just matters that you have a consistency. Sam's given a situation where I am able to grade three tests in 55 minutes. And so I want to figure out how long, if I stay at a consistent rate, is it going to take me to grade all, say, 16 tests um, that were submitted? Okay. And I need to tell how much time it is in hours minutes and seconds, okay? So how are we first gonna figure out, let's start with figuring out how long is it gonna take me to grade this many tests in minutes? What do we need to do? Uh, I, we are on a make-believe problem. Um, and so, yes, so our rate is, ooh, okay. So Jake ended up coming up with a unit rate, which totally works. Um, so there are 55 minutes per three tests. So minutes to tests. So how long is it gonna take for 16? We could cross multiply and divide by three or as um, somebody else had done, they broke it down to a unit rate. How long does it take per test? Um, and somebody got, it was eight and one third, 18 and one third minutes per test. Uh, but if we use the proportional way, let's see what this calculates to. I have 55 times divided times 16. So this gives me 880 
equaling 3x. So I need to divide 3 off of both sides. So 880 divided by 3 is going to give me x equals 293.333 minutes. Okay. So that's a starting point. Okay. Uh, if we had broken it down to Jake's version, if we 18.3333333, want to include a lot of those ongoing just so it's as accurate and close to the whole as possible, uh, times 16 to 93.33333. Yes, so that works. Okay, so yes, excellent, Ansel. So now this is how many minutes we have. We need to then figure out, well, how many hours is that? If we divide out 60, Divided by 60, what do we get? Four point eight hours. So four point eight hours. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just because there's an eight, 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 all of that stuff, we're just gonna figure out if we have four hours, how many minutes is that altogether? That's what we want to take out. If we take out four minutes or four hours, how many minutes have we taken away from this total? Two hundred and forty minutes. So if we take this big number and we minus two forty from it, two nine three point three 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 minus two point zero means that we have. 53.33 left. Well, this was how many minutes? Well, minutes we had left over. So that's why we don't want to just um, do, well, let me see. Okay, we could also, all right, we have two ways. Let's, let's continue on with this. When I took out my four hours, so as I took out 240 minutes from that, leaving me with 53.3333 minutes. So that means I have four hours, 53 minutes, and I need to find out how many seconds this is. If I have 0.33333 of a minute, how do I find out what that is in seconds? How many seconds are in a minute? 60. So if I multiply my decimal value by 60, 0.3333 times 60, I get 19.999998, which means 20. 20 seconds. Four hours, 53 minutes and 20 seconds. We could have also figured this 0.8 hours out by multiplying it by how many minutes are in an hour. 60 times 0.8 is 53.888 error, three, 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 three. So we could get there from that. We just keep multiplying these decimal values by 60 to find out, well, what is this much as out of how much is the whole amount? Uh, so we multiply 60 by one third. Yeah, basically what's a third of 60? Because point, this is a benchmark value. When we see this repeating three, 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 we know it's a third. What's 60 divided by three? 20, okay? Uh, so this is, uh, let's see, I can see if I can come up with another, do we want to do another example like this? Yeah, let me let me come up with a, a sample problem. All right, so making up another one of these. This time it takes me 43 minutes to grade five tests. How long is it going to take me to grade 18 tests? So we can start by making this. Uh, the same general setup, proportions. Yeah, if I have my 43 minutes for five tests, 
So minutes over tests. We can then say, well, how long is it going to take me to make 18 tests? So it's still that 18 times 43 and then dividing it by five. So question six says you are building a doghouse for Chumley, your loyal poodle. The blueprint of the doghouse uses a scale of one to 14. The floors of the doghouse measure two by two and a half on the blueprint. So what are the dimensions of the floor of the doghouse in real life? So one unit in the, um, the drawing equals 14 units in real life, okay? So, and in this case, it's gonna be inches. So um, one inch on the drawing equals 14 inches in real life. So how are we gonna find out what a two by 25 measures in real life, when, or what two by 25 on the blueprint is in real life? So if I have a two inches on the drawing, what is that going to be in real life? Twenty-eight. You bet, because one times x is x. Two times twenty-four, or sorry, two times fourteen is going to be twenty-eight. Yeah, we're just doubling it for every one of these that I have. I have. 14 of those, so if I have that twice, I have that twice, okay? So it's gonna be 28 inches by, so 28 inches by, now we have two and a half inches for the scale. So how many real life inches is that? It is gonna be 35. Yep, we cross multiply. We're gonna get 35 inches. So that's how big the doghouse is in real life. I hope this is a small dog. Okay. Okay, so the wood you're using for the floor costs $3.50 per square foot. How much will it cost to buy the material for the floor, assuming you could buy a piece exactly the right size, okay? So, we need, so it's for square feet. So this is saying we have this dog house that is 28 inches by 35 inches. And we need to find out what it is, the square footage of it. of the floor. So it costs us $3.50 per square foot, but do we know how many square feet we have? Okay, so if, um, well, th these would be square inches. Okay, so 35 square inches, okay. Okay, so then the next kind of tricky part, so we're saying there are a total of 190 square inches, but I don't know then how many that is as a square foot. A square foot means that it measures 12 inches by 12 inches. So how many inches is in a square foot? One hundred and forty four. So there are one hundred and forty four inches squared inches in a squared foot. OK, so if I have a total of. One hundred and forty four. 
Um, I know that was where I went with first because I was like, oh, divide by 12, but it's not just a 12, that'd be linear. It's 12 by 12 to account for the space in a square foot. So I have 980 square inches and 144 square inches are in a square foot. So these are what the values I want to be dividing because again, it was inches. So we have to find out how many inches is in this larger unit. So if we go 980 divided by 144, helps if I put this in here, 980 divided by 144 equals 6.805, right? Okay, so there are this many square feet on the floor of the doghouse. So if each square foot costs me $3.50, about how much would this cost? $23.82, yeah. So again, this is just that, that situation where we're dealing with two different units of measurement. It gives us inches, but it wants us to solve for feet. So this is also a situation where creating a diagram of it to map it out is really handy. Because when I first saw this, I wasn't quite sure how to solve this. So I needed to create a situation that looked familiar. And I, I'm used to having a rectangle and having a length and width and multiplying those two to find the inside value. But realizing that inside value was inches. Okay, I need to take out a square foot. Well, again, um, as somebody else had done, they tried to just take out 12. And I realized 81 square feet, no, that's way too big. That, that doesn't make sense. So that's why I created a rectangle and realizing, oh, if it's a square foot, it means it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So how much is that? And once I mapped it out, I could then realize, oh, this is, these are the numbers I'm working with to get the square footage to then be able to multiply it by the cost per square foot. So when in doubt, draw it out. Okay, so our next one says that uh, question seven, houses of different sizes are worth different amounts. Usually there's a price per square foot, uh, which is kind of a selling point of being like, ooh, that's way too much per the amount of space I'm getting. Uh, and so it's an important value to be aware of. So one way of comparing, comparing their price per square foot, a two bedroom house in Columbia Heights is 757 square feet and costs $209 thousand nine hundred dollars what is the price per square foot so how would we figure out what you are paying per square foot A setup of two oh nine nine hundred, and then we are going to divide it by how much floor space we get for that to find our unit rate of the cost per square foot. Anybody got a value? Rounded to the nearest penny. Oh, a mayor rounded up correctly. Great. So it is going to be $227 and, oh, sorry, sorry, $277 and 28 cents per square foot. Okay. That's, that's our unit rate for every one of these. I have this much in cost. 
So if there is question B then asks in a 1,564 foot home, uh, one block from the lake, it costs $160 per square foot. How much does this home cost? What are you gonna do to find out that? So you have 1,564 square feet at $160 per square foot. Yep, we're going to multiply 1564 by 160 to get a total cost. And when we do that, we should get $250,240. So, so $250,240. Okay, so between the two houses, which one's a better deal? And how do we know that? The Columbia Heights house or the lake house? The lake house, and why do you say that, Jake? It's cheaper per square foot. Yeah, we found out that the house on Columbia Heights was $277 per square foot. The house at the lake is $160. It's almost, um, you know, half the cost. So yeah, you're paying a little bit more for twice the house. Okay, uh, so this is, if you are ever decide to be a home buyer, is an important value to look at to make sure that uh, are, are you getting the best deal? Is it, is it worth it? And, and average costs per square inch or per square foot. Okay, so that is the concept review.